teach from the subject developing faith in your heavenly father. Developing faith in your heavenly father. Now, I could entitle this message developing faith in God. But I notice when you talk about God, people get lost in translation because God is a kind of generic word, even though to us God is our father. But God, you know, there are people who have pagan gods. You know, India have over 5,000 gods. There are different gods in Africa. God to someone is a stone. God to someone else is a monkey. That word can get lost in translation. But when you talk about your heavenly father, it makes it personal. And you'll be surprised how many people really just have general faith and it's not directed toward their father. Not just God. Yeah, he's father, God. But when you make him father, your father, it becomes personal. Praise God. Now, the problem with that, and we will overcome that hurdle automatically before we even get started, is that when you start talking about developing faith in your heavenly father, if an individual, a member, anyone, a Christian, have had a bad relationship with their natural father, then they struggle with that. Just the mental imagery of that because maybe their natural father was not a provider. Maybe they didn't even know who their natural father is. And maybe, you know, their natural father could have been an abuser. I don't know. And if that's the case, then people have to get over that hurdle of their natural father to their heavenly father. But I want to remind you, you've been born again. That's part of renewing your mind. And you've got to forget about uh, what happened in your natural father's house, how huge um, Joseph's, uh, excuse me, what is it? Let's see, Joseph, the Lord has made me to forget. Yeah, Joseph, who was sold in slavery by his brothers, uh, who, you know, was, was left in a ditch, a pit, to die, lied upon, uh, stripped of his coat of many colors, and there's a lot of trauma that he faced in his father's house. But at the end of his, his life, as he had his children, he said, he named his children Manasseh and Ephraim, for he said, God has made me to forget the tall in my father's house. And that's very important, so I want you to forget that. And I want you to take these scriptures and move beyond your natural father, what may have not, may have been there or not there, and move into your heavenly father and, and begin to put faith in your heavenly Yeah, we're talking about Jesus Christ. That's the sum of them. I'm talking about your heavenly father. These three are one, but I, I, the Lord wanted me to, to bring that out. That's why I'm naming this your heavenly father. Because if you understand fatherhood, there's security there. there that's what a father brings to a house. He brings security and a covering, praise God. And maybe you didn't have that covering while you was growing up in your natural home, but you have it now in the spirit that you are born again. So with that said, let's look at Romans chapter 8. And I wanted you to look at verse 14 through verse 16. Romans chapter 8, verse 14 through 16. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Far going any further, we're not talking about uh, gender. We're not talking about son because you're going to read son. We're talking about relationships. So you can say they are the sons and daughters of God because I don't want women to miss out on the revelation. So don't get caught up in the gender. Son, oh, he's talking. No, he's talking to his children. Hallelujah. Praise God. Some of you have more than one children. You have a son and you have a daughter, but they're both your children. So as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they're the sons of God. And that tells you one thing. That, before I even get off that, true maturity is being led by your spirit, not by your flesh. Sonship, daughtership. When you quit getting so emotional, you made me mad, I'm going to get you, I don't like you, you upset me. Well, you're still being led by your flesh. Grow up. Sons and daughters of God are controlled by their reborn spirit now. That's the sign of maturity. When I was a child, I speak as a child. I understood as a child, but when I became a man, full grown, mature, I put away childish things. I'm not touching fretful anymore. So, moving to the next scripture, he said, watch this, for... You, for conjunction, take that thought with this thought. You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, 
but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. You've not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. It's not when you got born again. Praise God. That's why I said quit majoring on your natural father, whether he was good or bad. And we're talking about developing faith in your heavenly father. Because he said you didn't receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. Again, what do you mean? When you were born again, God didn't put that same old spirit of bondage in you. But you receive the spirit of adoption. You've been adopted. We know God's chosen people were uh, Israel. But thank God we were grafted in. We were adopted. And under Hebrew law, the, the, an adopted child has just as much right as the firstborn. So we didn't lose anything by being adopted. We gained. You receive the spirit of adoption whereby we cry now, Abba. Now that word Abba means daddy. That's why I want this, you know, daddy changes everything. Because, I, you know, daddy. Give me some money, daddy. Daddy, will you take me to the park, daddy? Daddy, I mean, it's personal. There are people when you just say God and father. It kind of flows. That's so generic. But when you start talking about my daddy, I'm talking about a true relate. I'm talking about a father and son, and that's my daddy. That's my, my daddy took me to the park. My daddy going to get me something for Christmas. My daddy bought me my dad. Real children, the, the glory of the, fa of the children is their father. Now, forget about the natural father. I'm just trying to, what God is trying to say, that you got a daddy now. You're not an orphan. You've been adopted into a family. And you got the rights of the firstborn. Hallelujah. He says, now we got a spirit. In other words, it cries, I have a father. Before I got born again, I didn't have no father. I did, but it was the devil. He was a liar. He came to kill, steal, and destroy. He was the one that was trying to destroy your life. He was the one that wanted to kill and steal everything that you have. But you got a new daddy now. And this that we cry, I have a father. When I get in trouble, I need healing. Daddy. When I'm in trouble, daddy. When I'm facing danger, daddy. There's a spirit that cry. I cry out to my father. Hallelujah. I'm going to help some of you right now. This scripture will let you know who your real spiritual father is. I hear people, well, who's my spiritual father? Your spiritual father is not the person that led you to the Lord. Your spiritual father is the one that, that brought you light in revelation. He's the one that brought you understanding. Hallelujah. Someone can say, well, how can I know who's my real spiritual father? Because until, when you do that cry, that, that th it's quenched. Your son in you say, ah, I'm talking about spiritual father. I'm talking about your man of God. That's my dad. That's my spiritual father. Why? Because there's no more cry in my heart. It was met, praise God. That, that cry, that thirst was met. Hallelujah. Keep going. For the spirit itself, the Holy Spirit, Bears will with our spirit. See, you're born again spirit. That what? Now we are the children of God. Hallelujah. We're talking about faith. Develop faith in your heavenly father. Put this up in the Amplified. Praise God. Because there's a lot of people who never think about Father God. And thank God for Jesus Christ. Thank he's the author. Now listen, we, we, we're not talking about, we're talking about faith in both of them. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we're not trying to separate them, but you need to understand, you have, need to have a revelation of your Father. For, for all who are led by the Spirit of God, they're the sons and daughters of God. For the Spirit which you have now received, now when that you're born again. Any man being Christ, you're a new creation. God put a new spirit in you. Ezekiel eleven nineteen. It's not a spirit of slavery. That's what Satan was. He made us slaves to sin, slave to sickness and disease, slave to bondage. Come on. He said, you'll never receive a slave to put you, once again, you back in the bondage in fear. But you received the spirit of adoption, a spirit producing sonship and daughtership in bliss of which we now cry, Abba, Father, Father. I got a daddy. And he's rich and he's blessed. And he said, what's if you ask? Ask the Father in my name, he'll give it you. He, 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 joy, he has joy over his children. And keep going here. He says, for the Spirit himself does 
testifies with our own reborn spirit, assuring us, wow, that we are the children of Almighty God. Man, we've come in and you can go on and read the rest of this. Talk about if heirs, then, then, then children, then heirs of God. You've inherited everything from our Heavenly Father. Praise God. Hallelujah. We got a father now. We got a father. I, I, you know, there are people who never stop to think. Because like I said, especially if they struggle or had no relationship with their natural father. Now you got a heavenly father. And there's a spirit that cries, Abba, Father. And there are certain times in our life, I know it is how it is with me, that I need to talk with my father. I need to close the door and go talk to my father. And I cannot explain to him. And we'll get into this as we end about why we're praying and other tongues come in. He that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men but unto God. Therefore, how be it in the spirit, you're talking to God, your father, in this language. And there are times that natural words fail me. And the only way that I can talk to my father and cry out to him when, when maybe sickness and disease have hit your body. And you know by a stripes you're here, you're fighting a, a battle, praise God. You ain't got to fight by yourself, you got a daddy. Shannon ben there's time your spirit that's what tongues are you're talking to God your father you speak not unto men but unto God this is why a lot of people are so weak the Bible says you build yourself up and the enemy wants you weak he don't want you talking to your father he don't want you putting faith in your father we got a spirit that testify with our spirit that we are the children of God and there's time that just you know Thank God for people, thank God for relationships, but it's something about that, that, that quiet time and that private time with your father, daddy, that you come out of that prayer room, you come out of that fellowship room, build up and edify. Why? Faith in your father. Faith in your father. He loves you. He cares for you. When you face danger, danger he's right there with you. When there's needs in your life, you got a daddy, you got a father. Go to him. Go boldly to the throne of grace and talk to your father and lay your request before your father. Hallelujah, praise God. And go away knowing I cast all of my care on my father and I don't have to carry this anymore. I got a debt. I don't know about you. Praise God. There's, this is an area of our relationship that has been weak in the body of Christ because we just have this kind of generic faith and we forget about, yeah, thank God for Jesus Christ, but he has a father. Even Jesus pointed himself to his heavenly father. Even he went and prayed to his father. He exercised faith in his father. He said, listen, when I'm preaching, he said, the words that I speak unto you, they're not even my own words. They're the words of my father. I preach the word and he does the work. Faith in the Father and his word. That was the key to Jesus' ministry and doing miracles. He had this relationship with his Father. He would heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devil, do all of that. And once he would preach, he wouldn't just kind of just float around. He would go back, the Bible says, depart along in the mount and would pray to his Father, building himself back up. And this is why we have such weak Christians in the body of Christ because strength comes from communion and fellowship with God. That's how you keep yourself built up and strong, talking to God, fellowship with God, meditating the word of God, time with the Father in prayer, thinking on the word of God, time with your Father. That's how you build any relationship It's through fellowship. That's how you build a strong marriage, strong relationship with your son and daughter. Fellowship with them. Take time to talk to you. Fellowship. Well, when you fellowship with the father, it builds you up. We got a father. I got a daddy, man. Hallelujah. I don't feel alone. I'm not alone in this world. I'm not an orphan. I've been adopted and have all the rights of the firstborn. Mm -mm -mm. So with that said... God puts then in his children a spirit that cries, Abba, Father. Mm -mm -mm. God puts in a spirit. When you're born again, we take on his DNA. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, not man. An incorruptible seed, the same seed God put in Mary's womb that was put in Mary, that brought forth Jesus is the same seed 
incorruptible seed that exploded in my spirit when I received God. I was born again, and all things became new. And behold, all things are of God. And First Peter put it this way. Second Peter said, we partook of God's divine nature. I want to get personal with you. I got the DNA of my daddy. And the same fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, temperance, faith, goodness, against us. All those fruits were put in our spirit. Now we're developing them. That's the nature of God. The main nature is love, and out of love flows all of those fruits. And the Bible says against us there is no love. So that's got to come as a revelation. How much faith do you have in your father? Really? I mean, all day. How much have you thought about as you, I'm talking about like you would your daddy. I'll use your father. You know, some of you, you, you live with your daddy. Your daddy, you, you know, you see he's still alive. And you know you got a daddy and you think about him. I mean, how much, the same way you think about your, your natural father, how much have you thought about your heavenly father? How much time do you think about? How much do you talk to him? What type of fellowship do you? Uh, that's going to determine the strength of your relationship. God puts his in, his children, a spirit that cry. And I believe that's for a reason. God always wants you and I to be dependent on him. The minute you think you can go to school without your father, be successful, start a business, you know, run a, run a, you know, whatever you're doing without God. No, there's times you just have to go, Abba, Daddy, Father. That's what Abba means, Daddy, Father. Look at Galatians chapter 4. Verse 5 and 6, to purchase the freedom of, this is what Jesus did, to ransom, to redeem, to atone for those who were subject to the law, that we might be adopted. There's that word again. Adopted and have sonship, daughtership conferred upon us and be recognized as God's own sons and daughters. And because you are, are really, watch this, you really are his sons and daughters. God has sent the Holy Spirit of his son into our heart, crying, Abba, Father, Daddy. Wow, we are really sons and daughters of God. And I mean, I, I don't know any of God's children that, that, that really having faith should be struggling. And when I know right now as we speak tonight, there's a lot going on in the land. There's a lot of hate crimes going on in the land. There's a lot of, 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 of things and, 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 and shootings and, 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 you know, locally in the triad. And Satan is trying to put fear again in our heart that it's unsafe to go to church. You know, people are shooting in the church now. They're shooting in a grocery store. They're shooting here. He's trying to, but we got a father. That's what I want. That's why I'm preaching this tonight. We got a daddy, praise God, who watches over his own. We are, we are, the, we are the, what we call Praise God. He says, there's not a sparrow that falls from the sky without your father knowing it. You're most valuable then. Don't let fear grip you. Don't let fear put you in bondage. Notice you've not received the spirit of bondage that puts you back into fear again. But you've received a spirit that cries, Abba, Father. And we're talking about inflation tonight. Where people are talking about gas prices. And I'm not, I'm not denying it. Five, six, it squeezes the dollar, it inflates the dollar, and, and oil prices, and this and that, and wars and rumors. But we got a father. That's why I'm preaching this tonight. We've lost sight of our father. Now, father will take care of us. And if gas go to $7, he'll give us 8 If it go to 10 he'll give us 15 Why? Faith in my father. Not in my bank account. Not in my 401k. Not my father. Fear not you have a father. Gold, the silver, the cattle on a thousand hills. Hills is his and he's going to take care of us. You ain't got to fear. That's what I'm preaching this tonight. We've lost sight of our daddy. We are really his children. God is not a dad beat dad, father. <laughs> you know, that's another thing. My daddy never did nothing. We never got child support. He left us in early. I don't know. My, forget about all that. You got a new father. You got a new spirit. You've been adopted into the family of God. Get over those mental hurdles and start putting faith in your heavenly father tonight. And there's a spirit that cries, Abba, Father. And there's times in our life, if you ain't there yet, just keep living. There's going to be people that ain't going to understand, people you won't be able to explain, talk to. Now, it's only when you can talk to is your father. 
Thank you, Father, because that is the one who created you. Hallelujah, praise God. Now, let me go and give you a definition. Often, since we've been talking about this thing of adoption, 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 because that's why a lot of Christians act like they're orphans. They don't have a father. I remember watching the movie Slumdog Millionaire that really gave me insight into what being an orphan is. It's terrible. Man, they was abused, no protection, no one cares. That's what an orphan is. An orphan is a child who has no parent, friends, or inheritance. No parents. No one to care for them. No one to vouch for them. They, matter of fact, they, they, they were not even wanted. They was thrown. And sad to say that among of these orphans, they've been abused there. They've been sexually abused. Misused, mistreated. Why? Well, who's gonna know? They ain't got no daddy anyhow. Who's gonna take out a lawsuit on me? How you gonna sue me? You ain't got no father. That prime tongue, that's and that's how the devil he wants you to feel like an orphan. Like no one cares. I don't know what you're going through tonight. You may be lo- uh, 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 feel a uh, uh, lonely, but you're not alone. An orphan is not uh, uh, he may feel orphans are alone. You may feel lonely, but you're not alone. You got a daddy. If you're born again, he can get you the money. He can heal your heart. He can heal your body. I, I know what the doctor said, you know, about cancer, sickness, disease, but no, I got a daddy. My dad is a healer. We're talking about faith in your heavenly father. Not in your job. Not in someone else in your family. We're not even talking about your narrative father. Even if he's a good man, he can't do what your daddy can do. Your daddy can get you money. Your daddy can get you that job. Your da- and see, with inflation on the rise, the dollar being squeezed, we're seeing drive-by shooting, gang shooting here locally in the tribe. We're seeing it on a national level. We're seeing gun violence. We're seeing mass shootings here and there. Then what the devil wants to do is bring us back into bondage of fear. But I want you to know tonight you've got a heavenly father. And because you've got a heavenly father, he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. There where no foe can withstand this power. I will say the Lord. I will say my father. He is my God, my refuge. In him will I trust. I will not be afraid of the arrow by day, nor the destruction that wasted in the noonday hour, nor for the pestilence that's walking in darkness. For he hath given his angels charge over me. The cedar that I won't even dash my foot against the stone. Only with my I shall I behold, praise God, the reward of the wicked. I'm only going to be a spectator on all of this because I got a daddy. Quit acting like an orphan tonight. And the way you strengthen your relationship is getting your father's word. Spend time with your father in prayer. You've been disconnecting yourself from God from the source of life, from the source of your strength because we got so busy, caught up in the cares of this world and making money, job and children that you never pull aside like Jesus did at the end of ministry and spend time with his father and build up yourself. Hallelujah. If we ever needed our father, now is the time. That's why Jesus taught us to pray. Our father, not my father. Our father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. He's our father. You're born again. He got the same spirit. One day to become a revelation to you. So I'm not an orphan. Look at St. John's Gospel, chapter 14. St. John's Gospel, chapter 14. The Gospel of St. John, chapter 14. And I'm going to be reading this from the Amplified on that. I didn't need the other in the uh, King James, um, uh, from the Amplified. I think they got the message. Look what uh, St. John 14, and let's look at verse 15. These are the words of Jesus. He said, now, this is the Amplified only. He said, if you love me, if you really love me, you will keep and obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, your Father, and he will give you another comforter. Now, this comforter, you know, when we're talking about the Holy Spirit, let's don't go separating who God, the Father, God, the Holy Spirit, God, the Son is. These three are one. So it ain't like, well, God is there, the Holy Spirit. No, God is in us in the form of the Holy Spirit. 
What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? As he have said, I, God, your Father, will walk in them and dwell in them. So he said, I'm going away, but I'm going to come and be in you in a different form. That's what he said. He says, another comforter, notice this, counselor, describing all the natures of God, helper, mm -hmm, your intercessor, your advocate, that means attorney at law, your strengthener, God will be inside you to strengthen you. Stand by, I'll be right here standing by, beside. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I love this, that he may abide with you forever. Well, you know, God, 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 God took his hand on God, left. So, no, not the God I know. No, this God, when trouble comes, he said he will abide with you forever. Mm -mm -mm. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, welcome, take him in their heart. Why? Because they do not see him or know him or recognize him. But you will know and recognize him. Why? He lives within you. Great is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Constantly will be in you. And he said, I will not leave you orphans. That's what I want you to see. Comfortless, desolate, bereaved, helpless, forlorn. I will come back to you. I will not leave you orphans. I will not leave. God says, you're not an orphan. Even though I'm going away, I'm coming back in the form of the Holy Spirit. And I'll walk in you and dwell in you. And I'll be your helper, your guide, your standby, your strengthener. I'm your daddy. And I will have come to abide with you forever. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. If through sickness, bills, trials, tests come. You're not alone. You're not an orphan. I want you to get that tonight. So don't let the devil begin to put you in that spirit of separating like you're the only one like he did Elijah, only I and I, I'm the only Christian left alone. Watch out. Don't let the devil isolate you tonight. You're not an orphan. You're not going. God can heal. God can deliver. God can get the money. God can save your children. Whatever got you feeling like you're an orphan, meaning you've been forsaken, is a lie. I'm talking about faith in your heavenly father. He said, no, I'm coming back to you. I'll be right here. I'll be in you. So when he's talking about the comforter, he's talking about himself. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit of God? I will dwell in them, walk in them. In the Old Testament, God the Father dwelt in a man-made building. In the holies of holies. You had the first outside of the curtain where there was a table of showbread. And yet, behind what was called the curtain or the veil... There was what was called the Shekinah glory of God where the serpents, the Aaron rod that budded and the, the Ark of the Covenant, all, the, all of this was there. And God himself, and, and no one can go in his presence because he was in a building. Come about your father. But after Jesus died and was raised from the dead, matter of fact, when he was on the cross, the Bible says when he died and paid the price for man's kind, the veil of the temple was rent into. Go read it. And God moved out of a man-made temple, and on the day of Pentecost, he moved into men and women. The Bible says they was on the day of Pentecost, they was in one accord in one place, and God, the Bible says the Spirit of God, God himself came and sat on them. He went in them. Whew. They was filled with the Holy Spirit of God himself. God. Now, not in some man-made temple, but mobile temple dwelling in you and I. And he's right there with you. You got a daddy, praise God. Somehow we lose this revelation. We think God is a million miles up. I don't feel God. I don't know where God is. He's right here. But when I pray, I just don't feel like my prayer got higher than the ceiling. I don't have to get higher than you know. He's right here. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He's not with you because you feel him. He's with you because he said, I'll be in you. I won't leave you an orphan. What you deal with, you won't have to deal with alone. An orphan is someone, like I said, without any defense, any help. They're abused. They don't have any provisions. They don't have an inheritance. They don't have anything. Huh? But you not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but a spirit that cry, Abba, Father. So God wants you to put faith in him. God wants you to trust him. 
Even during this time of what the world is calling inflation and high pricing and gasoline and everything that we see and all the drive-by shootings and all this going on and all the stuff that's happening in supermarkets and malls and this, it won't come now where you do it. You got a daddy that will provide and protect you. You're not an orphan. That's what I want you to see. Praise God. Hallelujah. You're talking about developing faith in your heavenly father. Mm-hmm. So God says, fear not. I will not leave you orphans or without a father. I want you to get that. Fear not. I will not leave you orphans or without a father. I will come to you. Hallelujah. And of course, none of us, unless you really came from an orphanage, and you, you, people can't relate the horror of the orphanage, the abuse, the horror of the orphanage, and the, the sense of hopelessness, of, I'm talking about real orphans, those people who have lived as orphans who have no protection, who have no, they're abused and, and they're misused and they're prime targets for, for you know, I mean, they, you, if you watch Slumdog Millionaire, they was just used for all eyes put out to beg. and the, No one even cared. God says, you're not an orphan anymore. I care for you. I'm not an abuser. I'm not a deadbeat dead. I provide for my own. So God says also, I will manifest myself and make myself real to you. Wow. This is what I want you to see. Because there's something right here in the same scripture, St. John the 14th chapter. Your daddy said, not only am I going to not uh, leave you as an orphan, I'm going to show up. I'm going to move in. I, and when God moves in with you, <laughs> hallelujah, he'll, he'll pay the bills. He'll take care. I remember when I grew up, even my, I go back to the natural. Even my daddy in the natural paid the bills. Kept a, rent, a roof over our head, bought food. I mean, how much more, if your earthly father know how to give good things, how much more shall your heavenly father give good things to his own children? Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So God says, I'm going to manifest myself to you. I'm going to make myself real to you. You know why God is not real to a lot of Christians, even though they're born again? First of all, they don't spend any time with them. And they don't practice his presence. They don't talk to him. Because if someone real, my wife is real. I talked to her before I came here tonight. My son is real. I talked to him today. They're real people. You, if God is real, you need to talk to him. Father, you know, someone, you mean you go around and talk to him? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can talk out loud, but you just talk in your spirit. Yeah, like I did tonight before I go here. Father, I thank you. I'm in the car just talking to God. I thank you for revelation knowledge. I thank you, praise God, for supernatural recall. I thank you that Father Jesus is my wisdom, righteous, my center king. He's real. I talk to him. It's like I do a person when I'm in the car. When I go to bed, he's real like I do to my wife. He ain't real. And, that's, and it builds real. And guess what? He'll talk back. He said, my sheep know my voice. He speaks according to his word. And when you get in the word of God, you'll find not only you talk to God, God speaking back to you, speaking back to you, speaking according to his word. That's what builds relationship. And that's why a lot of people don't care. It's hard to have faith in their father because they only believe he's real. The only time they talk to him and they, is when they get in trouble and they, oh, Lord, help me out. Oh, Lord, I got to go to court. Oh, Lord. Well, what type of relationship is that? The only time you talk to someone is when you get in trouble, need some money. Okay? Now, let's drop down in the same thing. Let's look at St. John 14. And look, look at verse 20 through 23. I hope I'm helping you tonight. We're talking about developing faith in your heavenly father. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what's going on in the world. We got a father. And we got a spirit that cries, daddy. I got a daddy. <laughs> I like the daddy. It's personal. Praise God. My daddy gave me some money to go to the store. My daddy bought me a car. My daddy going to help me. My dad said when I graduate, he going to. See, and I know there again what's going on. Oh, you don't know. Forget about your earthly father. You got a heavenly father. I know whether good or bad. Don't, don't let that cloud your vision and distort your, your, your focus and your idea of your heavenly father. Now, let's look at verse 20. Same, same, St. John 14. He said, now, at this time, I'm reading from the Amplified. He said, at that time, when the day comes, remember he said, you know, the Holy Spirit will come and I'll be in you. You will know for yourself. I like that. <laughs> I know for myself. I ain't got to ask nobody. That I'm in the, my father. And you are in me. And I'm in you. <laughs> and I am in you. Me, me, you, and the father of Jesus all wrapped up together. He said, you're going to know that for yourself. The person who, who has my 
commands and keeps them is the one who will really, who, who, who really loves me and who really loves me. Watch this. And whosoever really loves me will be loved of my father too. Me and the father and I too. See, Jesus done got in with this thing now. He said, I and my father will love him. And will love him and show, reveal, manifest. And that's what we want. That's why people don't read God real well. If God real, why won't he pay my bill? Why won't he heal my body? God has said, I'm going to show you the key to manifestation. Because I'm about to show myself in your children, in your home, in your finances. Whatever you're going through, that's what we want, manifestation. God says, I will, we will manifest ourselves to him. I will let myself be clearly seen by him and make myself real to him. Judas, not a scarab, ask him, Lord, how is it that you're going to show yourself, make yourself mm -hmm, real to us or real to us and not to the world? Jesus said, if a person really, really loves me, that's the key. Because if you really love your father, and you, you don't spend time with him, he will keep my word, obey my teachings, and my father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home abode, special dwelling place with him. Jesus said, the father said, I'll move in with you. You're not an orphan. And God, listen, when God comes in, he takes over house. He's not going to be sleeping on mattresses. I guarantee you the springs are sticking in your back. He's not going to be staying in a home that's on welfare. I guarantee when God takes you, he paid the bills. Remember, the orphan meant that he had all the first rights of the firstborn. And that means now that you're no longer an orphan, but you've been adopted in God. God says, I'm moving in and I'm taking over. Praise God. Hallelujah, I'll be with you. If you're sitting at home right now, I don't care if you're going through depression. I don't care if you're going through divorce. I don't care if you want some sickness or disease. I don't care if you're facing a problem. I don't care if you're facing financial ruin. God is right there in your house according to this. You're not an orphan. He said, I'll move in. Yeah, he's there. Why don't you talk to him? Why don't you turn off the, the not, not the TV, not me, but all that other stuff after me. Get quiet and talk to him and develop some faith. In. He said, I'll make my abode. God will move in. And the first thing on what do you need here? Because you got a father. Let's say you ask the father in my name. Well, father, I need my children to be saved. I'm working on that right now. What else you need? When I need to get to work, I need a better car. I'm working on that right now. Whatever, whatever. I got to have these meals paid. We need further. We, God will change your status in life. You know when my life began to change? When God moved in. When I started making time and making room for him. Now, he won't knock the, the remote out your hand and, and knock the stuff. And, and he said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you open the door, I'll come in. He said, my fellowship is talking to the church. Y'all got too busy, too caught up with prosperity. You don't spend time with me anymore. You've, learned, you've left your first love. He said, I haven't gone anywhere. You have been neglecting me. I'll move in. I'll love you. And I'll take care of you. And I'll heal you wherever where you need to be healed. I'll meet your need. I'll save your children. I'm God. Hallelujah. I'm your helper. You stand by. Your need, your advocate. I'll be an attorney. If you got to go to court, I'm for you, not against you. If God be for, who can be against? I'm talking about developing faith in your heavenly father. There are a lot of people taking God for granted. Well, they just kind of think about, well, Jesus, but they forget about, wait a minute, Jesus and me and the Father. How much faith are you putting in your Father? Because Jesus put all his faith in the Father to the point that he died expecting his Father to raise him from the dead after three days and three nights. He's the pattern of faith, putting faith in the Father. Amen. I didn't come to do my own will, the will of my father. Everything was about his father. Yet, somehow we get disconnected and realize and don't realize that we got the same spirit that cries, Abba, Father, in you and I. God says, I'm right there in your home tonight. You just need to start talking like he's already there. Oh, oh, you're with someone else? Get in your prayer closet. Then spend some time. Just start talking to him. He's in your house. He'll turn things around. He'll turn that job situation around. I don't know what you're struggling with. I don't know who's come against you. He'll make your enemies your footstool. Praise God. I hit no weapon formed against you. Show faith in your father. Faith in your father. 
Hallelujah. You're not an orphan. You're not alone. Hallelujah. Praise God. Look at Luke 12. So we kind of take principles for granted. I don't. In my house, you know, I mean, man, I have a study. I know God is done, but God is all in my house. He has literally moved in. And there are special places. I like, I like our theater room. I like to go in there and just close the light. Sometimes just pray in the spirit. And just sense his presence. And I talk to him. Not just when I'm getting ready to preach. I talk to him every day. About my family. I make confessions over your life. About the church. About what the priest. What is happening, Lord. About the time. Strengthen them with my. I, I talk to him. He's real. He's, he said I'll make myself real. You know why he's not real to a lot of people? Because they, first of all, they don't treat him like you. They don't even talk to him. I don't even pray. They don't even read the word. Didn't get quiet. Let them talk back to you. That's the strength of any relationship is fellowship. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is real. And I pray tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, even while I speak, someone is listening to me. Maybe a member, maybe someone in another state. Make yourself real. Manifest yourself. Come down. I'm asking you to heal right now in that home. Save those children. Show yourself real to them. Do it, Father, as an act of this prayer. As I pray this, I pray not for myself. And I'm like Jesus. I thank thee that thou hast heard me and you hear me always. But for those that are streaming tonight, those that sit down, do some move in their home. Change, praise God, the atmosphere in the name of Jesus. Bring provision, bring healing, bring money. Pray even in the midst of inflation. I'm asking you to make a way out of no way. Show yourself strong in their behalf. In the name of Jesus, that people might know that you are real. Let them sense your presence and your anointing in Jesus' name. You know, even though we want you to come to church, you don't have to come to church to experience God's presence. He'll be real wherever you are. I sense his presence in the car coming here tonight. I sense his presence, praise. But we don't, we're talking about developing faith in you, Father. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. And that starts with fellowshipping with him. In the word, in prayer. Let me, let me show you something. Look at Luke's gospel. You're not an orphan. You need to say that at home and say, oh, I'm not an orphan. If you I'm not an orphan. I, I, I have received the spirit that Christ Abba Father. That's why there's something in you. Even you that are in backsliding conditions. Some of you that before the pandemic hit, we ain't seen you. That, that, maybe you backslid. Maybe you got in sin. Maybe you just got tired. But there's still, that spirit still is crying, Abba Father. The drugs can't satisfy that. The alcohol can't satisfy that. Illicit sex can't satisfy that. The worldly videos can't say All this stuff, these are attractions and go to park and you do all of this stuff trying to meet this heart huh? but now there's a spirit that cries for God not nothing else is going to ever satisfy you until you come back into fellowship with him and God says I'm married to you I'm married to you. just cause you love me I ain't divorcing you like I said on Sunday morning God does not accept resignation just cause you quit God says I ain't I'm going to stay with you well, I'm your father, and I've come to abide with you forever. You got my DNA still in you. Come home. Come, let us return unto the Lord. Watch this. I trust you getting something tonight. Hallelujah. Praise God. Go on and subscribe to YouTube channel. Go ahead, click on right now in the name of Jesus. You're going to need everything that's been preached this week, next week, and then get in church. Come on back home. The Father said, come back home. Luke 12, verse 29. And seek not what you shall eat, <laughs> what you're going to drink. And we right now in times of inflation, gas prices, how I'm going to pay for gas, how I'm going to get it. Neither be of a doubtful mind, for all these things do the nations of the world seek. He's talking about heathens, Gentiles. But they seek after this, and your heavenly father, you got a heavenly father. No, you have need of all these things. God know what the gas prices are. God know about your children's tuition. God know about your house payment. God know about car payment. God know about foreclosure. God know about every bill. There's nothing. He said, don't, don't, don't seek all that. He said, the world, people without a father. He said, you'll have a father. But rather, seek ye first the kingdom. Get back in church. Get in the word of God. All these things in the kingdom, they come as kingdom benefits. And all these things shall be added unto you. 
Fear not, little flock. Fear not, my children. I am your shepherd, you are my sheep. For your heavenly fathers is his good pleasure. Notice this. For it is your father to give you the kingdom. Hold that right there. Fear not, little flock. It's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He said, I know y'all need all these things that the world is seeking after this. And how am I going to get money? How am I going to make it in gas prices and bills? God says, consider the birds of the air. They don't sow no reap. They don't have a job. Neither do they get a paycheck on Friday. Amazing. I just look at robins every day. I, that's why I got bird feeders everywhere. And I just, I learn from the birds and I just watch him come. The robin just hopping around, getting the worm every day, getting the worm. Ain't worried about his kids. Ain't worried about his little chickadee. They going to get, and then I look at all the different type of birds. Then I just think about the birds in my backyard. I think about the finch. I think about the cotton. I think about the blue jay. I think about all the different types of birds, the mockingbird, all, and all of them are making, not one of them are sad. All of them are singing prayer. And that's just in my backyard. Think about High Point. Think about the track. Then think about the, uh, the North Carolina. Then think about the United States. Then think about the world, China. There's birds everywhere, and God every day feeds. There's not one bird. Yet we struggle. In other words, they understand that they got a father. He's going to take care of us. He said, quit worrying. Your father know you have need a holiday thing. Put this up in that five. And you do not seek by meditating and reading. That's what's that. It done took people's mind over. Lord, these gas prices. Lord, with this stuff going around. Lord, have mercy. If gas go to six dollars, Lord, have mercy. I tell you, I got shoot. Lord, have mercy. All these drive-by shooters. All these young people shoot one another. These gangs. Lord, have mercy. Can't go to church. It's unsafe. That's what the devil wants you to think. Lord, you can't go to the supermarket. That's what the devil. I'm meditating on the lies of the devil till fear get in you. Do not. See, by meditating and reasoning to inquire into what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, you get all anxious. That's where sickness and disease is coming from, anxiety, heart attack, fear, high blood pressure, trouble, mind, unsettled, excited, worried. Did you hear the news last night? They said it will drive by, oh, somebody else got shot again. There's another mass killing. Suspense for all these the pagan world is greedily seeking after these things. He said, you ain't got to worry about that. You're in a different category. You've been born again. You've been a spirit, spirit that cries out of a father. Your father knows you have needed them. So since you, so aim at it. Get your focus back. Come on back to church. We're preaching about the kingdom of God. All them things that you're worried about, all those things, your children, finance, and family, and going through this. God knows you what you're going through. You're not an orphan. Strive for it. And seek his kingdom. And Matthew says, seek ye first the kingdom. And all these things shall be supplied to you also. Notice God is not against you having things. He don't want things having you. Do not be, do not be seized with alarm and struck with fear and terror. Think it not strange. We in the end time, folks. It's going to be a whole bunch of stuff Satan going to do to get attention. But we got a father. We're not orphans. He said, don't be struck with fear. Little flop. For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. If gas go up to $9, don't worry. I'll supply your need. Hallelujah. Praise God. According to my riches and glory, by Christ. Why? You're not an orphan. I'm responsible for you. Hallelujah. I provide for my own. So quit allowing terror and all these things to strike you. God says, I know you have need of these things. God said, then fear not, for your father will provide for you. Fear not, your heavenly father will provide for you. You got to trust him. That's why I've been talking, calling this developing faith in your father. Because I realize that a lot of people just have this type of generic faith when you say God, faith in God. Well, depending on your idea of God, God can be a frog. God can be something in, in you know, a tree stump. God, there's all types of gods. There's false gods. There's a, no, we're talking about your heavenly father. We're talking about bringing it home, going beyond just God and making him Abba, my daddy. Like someone you personally know, love, and you know when you're going through your family, Abba, that's my daddy. That's how you all know God. That's just good. Know for yourself. He said he'll make himself real to you. 
reason God's not real to a lot of people, they don't spend no time with him. They don't talk to him. They don't spend no time in the word. God is real to me. I got a friend. And when I feel even lo- a lo- lonely, I'm not alone. I-, 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 I realize God is right there. And all I got to do is stir him up. And that's what I want to get into here in a minute. But notice here he says in Psalms 23, 1, a Psalm of David, the Lord is my shepherd to feed to God, to to shield me. Notice what a shepherd does. God will feed you. He's going to take care. He's going to make sure your needs are met. Care about gasoline. He's going to guide. He's going to be your shield. He's going to shield you from the drive-by shooting. He's going to shield you from all the murder, from rape, all these things that's going on. He's going to shield you. Well, uh, you know, well, you can't go to the grocery store. No, he's got a shield. He's your shepherd, see? your father. Uh, he's your guide, your shield. He's going to feed you, and I shall not or do not lie. I ain't going to lie for nothing. I don't want for anything. We're talking about putting faith in your father. Fear not, little father. It's your father's good pleasure to feed and guide and pray, take care of the flock. Hallelujah. 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 He leads and guides me in the pastor, and he anoints my head with all in the presence of my enemy. Mm-mm-mm. And I can go on and on. That psalm, we just done kind of religiously quoted that and wasn't even re- extracting the faith. Of it. You all to receive him, your father as your shepherd tonight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's watching over you. Even when you go to bed, your shepherd. He never sleeps nor slumbers. Praise God. Hallelujah. He that keepeth Israel, that's what it says the church, neither sleeps nor slumbers. Now, I want to get into the last, in the last few minutes about this. And uh, I want you to look at 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 14, verse 2. Because here's really the strength of developing faith in your father, building a strong relationship with your heavenly father. In 1 Corinthians 14, 2, 1 Corinthians 14, and we're going to look at verse 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, Verse 2 says this right here. It says, um, for he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto who? <laughs> it's amazing how folks, religious folks, well, you know, them tongues, you're talking to the devil. Well, you need to read your Bible. He that speaks not in unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God. If I was the devil, I would tell you it was you talking to me too. Well, I don't want you, you devil don't want you talking to God. Why? He Bible says, for no man understands him, howbeit in the spirit he, he edifies or he speaks mysteries. You know, you keep on reading when it says he that pray in the unknown tongue, he edifies himself. So he that speaks in an unknown tongue, if you're going to build a relationship with your father, you need to talk with him. And sometimes your natural mind, that's why I love praying in the spirit, which is of God. Why? He says, you're speaking divine mysteries. There are things you don't understand about your children, about your family, about your finances, about situations on your job, but God does. And thank God for the help of the Holy Spirit. He will help us. Put this up and amplify it. For one who speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men but unto God. If you're going to develop a very strong relationship and develop faith in your heavenly father, you need to talk to him. And the best way to talk to him is in the spirit. Why? He, he speaks to not unto men but unto God. No one understands or catches his meaning because the Holy Spirit, thank God our helper, utters secret truths and hidden things not obvious to our own understanding. Thank God there are things that, 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 that only the Holy Spirit can pray through. Stuff when, when there are certain type of things and attacks and assignments of the enemy against your job and against your children and they own drugs and they own alcohol. You don't have an understanding for all that. How to get the finances you need. Especially during this time that we are seeing gas prices and inflation that we are seeing murder and, and drive by shoot. We need to talk to God. I need to be strong with my father. I need to be in tune with him. Not just TV. And the Bible says you speak divine, see, things that are not obvious to your understanding. So let me just put this up as I close. Put up this statement because you must then develop confidence in your prayer life with your heavenly father. How are you going to develop faith and confidence if you don't talk to him? 
Yeah, read the word. Yeah, study the word. But then spend some time in prayer. I don't care about what religious folks think. I've been praying in tongues now for all months, 40 something, six years. Got born again, thank God. I know what the Bible says about it. I'm going to talk to God. I'm going to build myself up. That's why I get these messages. That's why I talk to my father. I got a daddy. Hallelujah. And he's right here. And when you can't understand nothing, and he understands everything and how to get me through every trial and test and situation around me. Praise God. Romans 8.26 says this. It says, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmity and weaknesses. We are weak. We don't know. We need help. For we know not, not how, what to pray for as we are. Some of you in situation about money, finances, children, marriage, stuff on your job. Gun. You don't know how to really uh, or what to pray for as you are. But the spirit, watch this, itself make an intercession with what? Groanings which cannot be uttered in articulate speech. You got the only way you can get it in tongues. This is why a lot of people have weak relationships. They don't talk to God. And even if you don't want to talk to him in other tongues, you need to talk to him in prayer. Talk to him according to his word. But it's something about praying in the Holy Ghost that edifies and builds yourself up. Praise God. Now, I want to leave this with you. Since it says with groanings that cannot be uttered, I want to show you what Jesus did. Times of pressure. St. John's Gospel. We'll close with this. Chapter 11. I trust that you're getting some. Amen. Get on back in church. Praise God. Get around the body of believers. 10 o'clock Sunday morning, be here, praise God. Let God move in your life. Let his presence, praise God, consume you. Of course, if you're not going to do it, don't stop streaming. Thank God you need the word at 11. We love you and appreciate you. You got St. John's Gospel? We're going to look at this again. And we're going to look at chapter uh, 11. Look at verse 32. This is about... Lazarus, after being raised from the dead or being raised from the dead. I want you to pick something up. Look at verse 32. I'm talking about developing confidence in your prayer life with God. Talk to him. Verse 32 says, And when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother, that that die. Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews weeping and came uh, with her, and he groaned. And watch this. When he came with the, he, the Bible says he groaned in the spirit. Now, what was he doing? Just mm, his stomach was hungry. No, he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto man, but unto God. Hmm? For likewise, we don't know what to pray for. As all the spirit itself make it intercession with what groanings that cannot be other. He's praying in other tongues. Why? He's going to have to raise laser. Raised Lazarus from the dead. This is beyond his understanding. So he's putting confidence in his father. He was troubled. And the Bible says, he said unto them, where have you laid him? They said, come on, Lord, and we will see. All right? We pick this thing up in verse 38 and 39. Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in the spirit. Confidence in the father. Likewise, we know not what to pray for as well. The spirit itself make an intercession. We're groanings. Who is he talking? He's talking to his father. And he coming to the grave. It's a cave and a stone laid upon it. And he said, take away the stone. Martha's sister uh, said, bye bye, now he's dead. Said, you know, Lord, he's dead. You know, he's been dead four days. And he said unto him, by now, this time he stinketh. He's been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, you know, well, you know, okay, all of that, Martha. You're going to see the glory. But this is what I want you to see as we close. I want you to look with me at verse 41 through 44. He took away, they took away the stone from the place. And where the dead was laid, Jesus lifted up his eyes. Now he's grown, prayed to God two times. Now listen to this. Jesus lifted up his eyes and he said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. What? When did he pray? What do you mean thou hast heard me? Oh, well, he prayed twice. He prayed in the spirit. He groaned in the spirit. We're talking about putting confidence in your prayer life with your father. I thank thee that thou hast heard me and that thou hears me always. Woo! But because of these people would stand by, that's why I'm praying and he said it, that they may believe that thou hast heard me. And when he thus has spoken and cried with a loud voice, Lazarus! 
come forth. Confidence. Praise God. Speaking the dead things, calling things to be not as though they were. The dead came forth bound and with hand and foot with great clothes at his face, bound about with a napkin. Jesus said to him, loose him and let him go. Now, this is what I want to leave with you. Praise God. This statement right here. This is what you're going to have to do. Notice the confidence, Jesus, that I thank thee that thou hast heard me, that thou hast heard me and hear me always. That's how you develop confidence in your relationship with God. Shut the door to the world. Brain noise. That's what I call it. The cares of this world. Bills, problems, children, family, news, this. Everything is trying to distract you and get your attention, crowd your spirit. But what's going to build you up with your relationship with God is time with him and pray to your father. And I'll leave this with you, Matthew 6, verse 6. But when you pray, go into the most private room and close the door. The Amplified says the, I mean, the King James says the closet. Close the door. You got to shut out the world, shut out the children, shut out the problem. And pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who see it in secret will reward you openly. Open rewards. Time with God. If you want to be powerful publicly, you're going to have to be prayerfully, privately. We spend no time with them. But we want them to wonder why, why we're not seeing the sick killed and seeing our children and finances change. No time with your father. So start praying in the Holy Ghost and have confidence. Oh, that jibber jabber. It don't matter what it's on. You're talking to God. And he understands the language. And Jesus said, yeah, I'm grown in father. I thank thee that thou, thou, thou hast heard me and hear me always. And God will hear you always. Start spending time with them. Shut the door. Praise God. Hopefully we'll see you on this Sunday at uh, 10 a.m. If not, live streaming. Praise God at 11. God bless you. Pray for me and Joyce as we pray for you. We'll see you Sunday one way or another.